In November 2021, 31 people on a small boat were heading from France to the UK. Three and a half hours later, the boat started to sink. Shortly after that, 27 people drowned, including a mother and her three children. This awful incident happened right here on the busiest shipping lane in the world, the English Channel, which is also one of the most dangerous migrant routes in the world. A few weeks later, I traveled to Calais, a small port city on the northern coast of France, where for a long time, migrants have camped out in makeshift tents in the freezing cold before they make the dangerous crossing towards the UK. And I went there because I wanted to understand why people were making this journey. And it's actually much scarier than it sounds. No, no. See, it's not possible for me. If it's just only one kilometer, I will not try. This is how traumatized one person was about the thought of crossing the English Channel by boat. But there were plenty of others who were still willing to take the risk. Three times by small boat, and two times by trucks. And one time by train. My situation is not good, and I feel cold. We not feel safe in France. Turkey, Italy is better than this place. Really? This place is not, not okay. I will try, maybe by sea, maybe by trucks. I will never give up. See, the UK government doesn't want to have to deal with any of this and is working incredibly hard to put an end to it. It's shutting down its borders and painting a false picture about migrants to the general public. The British people deserve to know which party is serious about stopping the invasion on our southern coast. And all of this is taking place during a time of economic struggle in the UK, where people are struggling to feed their families and heat their homes. Meanwhile, the government is spending millions of pounds on inhumane policies to try and stop people from having a shot at applying for asylum. But it's not gonna work, and I'm here to tell you why. Before we continue with this story, I need to just take a minute to thank the sponsor of today's video, Exter. Exter is known for inventing the first trackable wallet, and they are now on a mission to upgrade the rest of your carry essentials, which is great for me because when I'm in Calais, Northern Ireland, or somewhere else reporting, chaos descends within my camera bag after a few hours of filming. And looking for my wallet in here is almost impossible. And it always comes with that fear that maybe I lost it, or it fell out when I was changing lenses on the side of the road two hours ago. But since I switched to using the aluminium card holder, it relieved that stress. It holds up to 15 cards and cash with quick access at a click of the button, and it just fits flush in my pocket. And best of all, it comes with a tracking card. So if I ever did leave it on the side of a road, I can track its location from my phone. All wallets have built-in RFID blocking, so you are protected from data theft and wireless skimming. If you click the link in our description and use the code FAULTLINE at checkout, you will get up to 30% off from the 13th of April to the 8th of May for the spring sale. Thank you, Exeter, for supporting this video. So let's now jump back into understanding why migrants are taking this dangerous route to cross the English Channel. The English Channel is a narrow arm of the Atlantic Ocean and separates the southern coast of England from the northern coast of France. It's 348 miles long, and at its shortest distance is the Strait of Dover, a 20-mile gap between Dover and Calais. Before we dive into the implications of crossing this body of water, we need to understand why people choose to seek asylum in the UK. These are predominantly people who are fleeing war and persecution, escaping poverty, famine, and other dangerous situations. They may even have family in the UK or can speak English, which will help them get by in the UK, but not as much in France or Germany due to language barriers. And let me make one thing clear. It isn't illegal to seek asylum in the UK. The UK is a signatory of the 1951 Refugee Convention, an international treaty which says that people can seek asylum in any country they choose. Meaning even if a migrant came in illegally, it cannot strip them of their ability to seek asylum. But the decisions being made by the UK government in 2023 are contradicting this. It has proposed a new law that gives authorities the power to deport people arriving on its shores. In a Twitter post, the British Home Secretary, Suella Braverman said, This bill will mean that if you come here illegally, you will not 
be able to stay. You will be detained and removed. The new law is called the Illegal Migration Bill. It's the latest attempt in a long line of failed bills by the UK government to control unauthorized migration. This means that thousands of people seeking asylum would be detained and deported to their home or a third country that the government considers safe and banned from re-entering Britain. In fact, in June of 2022, the government passed the Nationalities and Border Act that states that arriving in the UK without a visa or a special permission is a criminal offence. So you might be a little confused right now. There's an international treaty that says one thing, and here's the British government continuously taking efforts to do the exact opposite. So my big question is, why is migration really that big of a burden on the UK? If we put the British tabloids aside for a minute and zoom out and look at the data across the rest of Europe, Britain actually receives fewer applications for asylum seekers than other nations. In 2021, the UK stood fourth in line behind Germany, France, and Spain. In fact, it received less than 40% of asylum requests than Germany received. But the government is fixated on one number that has been steadily on the rise and is very visible to the eye. And that's those trying to reach the UK by small boat. Across migrant crisis. With dozens of migrants rushing in. Put yourself in these people's shoes for a minute. You've had to flee your country and you've already gone through these horrendous experiences and the journey has been so long just to get into the EU. And you're now here in Calais. You're on the shores of Calais with the hopes that you can get to the UK and apply for asylum. And you can see it, you can see it right behind me. And you see these ferries going back and forth every single day. Their only option that is available to them is to get in a tiny boat crossing this freezing cold ocean because they don't have any other option. And I don't think people grasp what sort of position you have to be in to be making that choice. So people understand the dangers and it's not a safe bet for entering the UK. Yet the number of small boat crossings is rapidly increasing. Why? Well, there are simply no legal routes for those fleeing their home to reach the UK, except for Ukrainian refugees. And there are separate arrangements that are open to limited groups, such as Afghan refugees or British national status holders from Hong Kong. This essentially means that the UK has closed its borders to everybody else. For a lot of these migrants hoping to rebuild their lives in the UK, the only way for them to apply for asylum is by being in the country. And here's a very unknown geography fact for you all. I know this is a map of France, but the UK is a freaking island. The UK is a castle and the English Channel is a moat keeping people out. But before Brexit, the UK was bound by an EU law called the Dublin Regulation. It states that a country where an asylum seeker first arrives in the EU is usually the one responsible for processing their asylum application. But after Brexit, many EU countries refused to make bilateral migrant return agreements with the UK that aimed at sending back migrants fleeing French borders as it was no longer part of the EU or the Dublin regulation. In 2019, 300 people made the crossing in small boats. But in the past year, more than 45,000 people crossed the English Channel. That number soared mostly because the refugee resettlement scheme was suspended during the COVID-19 pandemic. And with time, routes through which lorries traveled were severely restricted after 2020. This is still much lower than the number of people arriving in Europe as a whole. Nearly 155,000 people arrived in Europe through the Mediterranean Sea in 2022. So the influx of migrants isn't new or unique to the UK. And over a quarter of Brits are under the assumption that asylum seekers get the same benefits as themselves. And more than half of the population holds a negative view of those crossing their channel. Today, I'm in Nottingham in the UK, meeting up with one of those people that I met in Calais 15 months ago, who is now settled here in the UK. I'm excited to catch up with him and hear his story and hear how life has been over the last 15 months in the UK. Hey. 
you doing, man? Good to brother. Good to see you. How are you doing? This is Francisco, the man who refused to ever get back on a boat after he faced horrific experiences on the Mediterranean. I tried nine times. Libyan Coast Guard pushed us back to Libya nine times. This is my ten times I wish here. When I met you, the big thing that stuck out to me is that we were asking people about the boats, the small boats, right? Yeah. And everybody yeah. was saying, it's a short distance, so we've yeah. done worse. Yeah. And you said to me, I will never go I on a boat again. I wouldn't do that, yeah, I wouldn't do that because, you know, you have to learn of your past. I tried this when I came from Libya. It was a terrible journey I ever tried for in my life. Thank God I reached to Italy. I say, sea or anything connect me to water, I will not trouble to do that. I see so many people, I have a friends, and two of them, they travel by sea. They call me. We are here in the UK. And I say, okay, that's fine, I will come by my way. And then I try three times. The first time, it's so hard to come here by truck. Some they've been there for one year in Cali, always trying every night, every morning, every any time they are going for it, and they fail. Four times that I came here straight. That day was so raining. Go to truck, and truck came to the port, and I came to Dover. As we spent more time together, I noticed that the government had repeatedly fed the public false narratives about asylum seekers getting the same benefits as everybody else, because that just isn't true. Francisco gets an allowance of just eight pounds a week. Is it enough? I don't think so. It's not enough. But no, you have no choice. It's, 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 so you have to manage with that eight pound and buy. Or maybe sometimes I keep them for three weeks, two weeks if I want to buy something close or something. And then I can come to Primax. The average amount given to somebody whose accommodation provides meals like Francisco's is about nine pounds. In 2021, Britain's then Home Secretary Priti Patel referred to those entering the country illegally as economic migrants. And she even said that they weren't genuine asylum seekers. But when the Home Office was asked for evidence, it had no proof to support these claims. Right now you can't yeah. work, right? Yeah, no, no, I can work. I'm ready, maybe if they allowed me to work, I will work to help others. And you pay tax, other people pay tax because of us, because of other things in the country. And the same thing we have to do. So instead keeping people for three years, four years, five years, paying for them when they are sleeping, I don't think that's fine. There's a lot of problems going on in the countries. And that's why we are just waiting. Yeah, you have to be patient. A 2021 study by the British Refugee Council showed that 91% of people who came to the UK on boat were from these 10 countries, where human rights abuses and persecution are common. South Sudan was founded in 2011, but two years later, forces allied to the president and vice president began fighting each other. That civil war has now led to the near collapse of the country. At that time I was young, and there's some people, and there's a village nearby, they came there and they took every young guy's people there and forced them to army to go and fight. That was the reason that I left. And that was a terrible situation. People like Francisco need support. In spite of that, the UK government is dedicated to taking back control. We talked about this a lot in recent videos. And one of the efforts is tied up with a third country. Rwanda. Last year, Suella Braverman said, I'd love to be having a, a front page of the Telegraph yeah. with a, fly, a plane taking off to Rwanda. That's my dream. That's my dream. It's well, this came a little after judges from the European Court of Human Rights blocked the deportation of seven migrants to Rwanda, as the move was in direct violation of the European Convention on Human Rights, which is against sending asylum seekers to countries where they may be at risk. Because Rwanda is known for its problematic human rights issues, from arbitrary killings and kidnappings, torture, interference with privacy and violence against journalists, and so much more. So yeah, Rwanda sounds like a really safe place to be sending these people. Despite this, the UK government is still continuing its plan with Rwanda through the Migrant and Economic Development Partnership. It hopes to discourage people from taking illegal, dangerous, or unnecessary methods to reach the UK, and has paid the Rwandan government 140 million for the scheme so far. The UK government is going to all these lengths because it claims the current asylum system costs it 1.5 billion pounds every year. And the reason it costs that much is because a lot of money is spent on accommodation for asylum seekers whilst they're waiting for their application to be processed. 
This is where I'm living and my accommodations. It's a big hotel actually. I think other side is for the student and this side is for asylum seekers. Over 100,000 people have been waiting for six months or more. 83% of small boat asylum applications since 2018 are still pending. In 2021, the average wait time in the UK was 15 and a half months, almost twice as long as it takes in Germany to process asylum applications. The worst affected are children. There have been reports of hundreds of children going missing, being abused and even abducted from accommodations that the UK government put them in. There were two people, one woman and a man, they came there filming and asking the staff of the hotel why these people are living here, saying they shouldn't be here, they have to go where they came from. How, how does it make you feel? <laughs> that one is quite difficult, so... I'm not happy with that, but it's, you know, it's a part of life. I didn't choose for myself to be in the UK. It's a situation that I face in my country that led me to leave the country. And there's no place like a home. So you've got the UK government that's trying to stop people from arriving via illegal routes, deporting migrants to a third country, and even begging European countries to take back migrants who cross the English Channel. The UK government pledged to give France £54 million in 2021 to 2022 to boost surveillance and police patrols and increase infrastructure security at ports. This was after the deadliest incident on record, which we talked about at the start of this video. Even after that incident, migrants continued to cross the Channel. A year later, in December of 2022, four migrants died on the English Channel. And what did the two governments do? They simply revised existing deals. The UK will give France almost 500 million pounds over three years to stop migrants from leaving the French borders to cross the English Channel. But tell me, how are you meant to patrol this coastline? It goes on for miles. It's obscene to think that they can control that and stop people trying to make the journey but they claim that the money will be spent towards 500 extra officers and detention centers on French soil that will be fully operational by the end of 2026. But what the UK government is failing to understand is that throwing billions of pounds to detain migrants and deny them asylum is not gonna stop deaths or people smuggling and trafficking across the English Channel. Boat smugglers are going to capitalize on the animosity that the government is portraying and continue to take advantage of innocent, desperate migrants who are trying to make a better life for themselves. They are going to take more dangerous journeys and continue to risk their lives purely because they're running out of options. How old were you when you left South Sudan? I left South Sudan in 2016. Well, yeah. That was a long time ago. It's a long time ago. So that mean I was 17 or 18, I don't know. So you left when you were young? Yeah, it's, it's a crazy story. I can't even imagine having to go through this, having to flee war, getting caught on the Mediterranean nine times and being thrown into prison, and then spending seven years on the move, boarding trucks to reach safety, and then all of that to end up waiting for asylum for over a year. So what needs to happen? The UK government has pledged to clean up much of the backlog of existing asylum applications by the end of the year, and it has to commit to it and speed up the process of future applications to avoid long wait times for refugees. The Illegal Migration Refugee Bill that's proposed is not only violating the 1951 Refugee Convention, but if it becomes a law, it will force more money out of the country's taxpayers. In the meantime, it needs to realize that providing safe routes to enter the UK and expanding resettlement schemes to help migrants is the only safe and humane way forward. This will allow thousands who deserve a chance to reunite with their family, who are looking for a job or to seek education in the UK and can then start to contribute to our society. Other parties like France need to work with the UK to implement a well-functioning, human-centered and properly resourced asylum system. At its very core, these countries need to prioritize protection of human rights and to find humane ways to deal with this migrant crisis. Francisco, we, nice day. it's been a very nice day. You, there was, you have so many friends around here. I have We've so seen, many we keep, friends. We keep running into your buddies. Yeah. We just had a coffee with them. 
And that's why I chose UK when I when yeah. I came here because I know a lot of people here. Uh huh. And uh, some of my relatives better than staying where you didn't know anyone. Yeah. And your friends have now had their applications approved. They're working. Yeah. They're yeah. still studying at college. Yeah. So that's a great, I guess, inspiration for you as well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and like amazing for them. Yeah. That concludes my tour of Nottingham. Yeah. Thanks for showing us around. You're welcome. Next Should time. people come check like, out Nottingham if yeah. they're in the UK? They have to come because Nottingham is a cooler city in the UK. It That's is a cool place. Better than London, I think. <laughs> <laughs> London might be a city, but you know, there's some things that you are missing. I don't think if you live in London, yeah. you would be happy like <laughs> when you live here. That's shade at me. Yeah. It's like, come move to Nottingham. Yeah, you have to come. <laughs> okay.